Yeah. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everyone. How are you guys? Hey, Weezy. Good. How are you doing? Good. Nice. How are you? Hi, yeah. Jay. Hi, Dweezy. That sounds <laughs> weird. <laughs> anyway, I am going to say something once, and this is going to be the only time I say it on the show. And I am not, I don't have any dirty laundry to air. And I want to say, I do. <clears throat> I want to oh, say gosh. that for those that felt that we corrupted a different show last night, we did not. We started at 6 p.m. and it just happened to go over. It was not un intentional in any means. And <clears throat> we still don't know what happened. I know a lot of you are probably wondering what the heck. We don't know either. And that's just, I guess, the way it's going to be. So nobody will tell us anything why, why we're the bad ones. Um, I've heard also that people um, think that I'm doing everything just for views. No, I'm happy that you guys are here. And I would like you to stay here and watch. I do this for fun. I'm not getting anything. If you wanted views, you wouldn't have me on here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I am very thankful for everybody that I've met um, in this journey that we've taken. Um, but I'm it's it's over and done with at this point. It's like I want to be a happy person again. I am sick of the drama. So to end with it, we're brushing it away. Okay. I'm not I need the drama. <laughs> Live for it. But nope. I do need to lecture you to before this proceeds. I want you to pay attention because when you're playing your commercials, I want <laughs> both of you to be very cognizant of your hand gestures. <laughs> if something goes wrong. I want you to be consummate professionals. That's my expectation of you both. Got it. Watch your hand gestures. <laughs> All right. Like this. <laughs> All right. So continuing back to the show. We have no snow. Hold on. We have a uh, snow, <laughs> big snowstorm coming. And Eric and I will be driving in it tomorrow afternoon, headed to Chicago. So that's the only thing new with us. I'm not a hundred percent on my health rate yet. Um, after dealing with COVID last week, that kicked my butt round two. <clears throat> so, but I went back to work and I tested negative last Saturday. So I'm getting there. So Dewey's, how about you? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm feeling great. Okay. <laughs> the weather is terrible. It's just a crappy weather down here. Right yeah. now, it's just windy. Rain, it's either raining or windy. I don't know. Yeah. And, and it's the, it's not cold, not really. It's like in the 50s or 60s okay. some days. It's just crappy. That's a heat yeah. wave to us right now. Yeah. <clears throat> just, and if it's cold, I'm not going to fly. What so. about you, you dress wearer? <laughs> Hey, I am quality. Quality. <laughs> you are quality. You are. So, I am super excited tonight for our guests because coming into this, so like my attitude, like when I first came into this is obviously I came from the bottom and I was like always looking up, but I continually like just, you find people online. Maybe you don't talk to them right away, but our guest tonight is, he's a very beautiful man and I was intimidated <laughs> by him. You but always you yourself, get on guys. Yeah, I do. But, <laughs> You can always put yourself out there a little he bit. Me. You, can, you can see what they say. And then you can learn a little bit about people. And then you start talking to them just a little bit. Maybe it's just a comment. And then it turns into a chat and whatever. And time and time again, whenever I'm doing this, you just find people where it's like, <laughs> man, whenever, if I ever meet this person, it's just going to click. You don't even have to have a deep conversation. You're just going to have a good time. And this is like one of those guys. I'm just, I haven't. I've been in the same flying as him before, but it was a while ago, and I I didn't see him then, but I'm definitely excited to see him in person someday here. Okay, are you done talking so we can meet him? 
unless you want me to talk about my personal problems. No. <laughs> I do air motor therapy and nobody does it for me. So. Well, let's introduce this guy before he falls asleep listening to us talk. <laughs> hey, <George. laughs> Hello, everybody. Are you <laughs> sure you want to be part of this show? <laughs> I don't know, man. The way Steve's talking, I might have to run. Right? <laughs> run fast. You have to take that in the back room. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So All tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're from Montana. Yep. Great White North, Montana. Um, I'm the only paramotor pilot in my town and uh, I've been flying paramotors for about four years and uh, self-trained and um, I love it. It's the coolest thing I've ever done. Well, that takes care of one of my questions. Do you fly with other people or do you fly um, I do. I, I like to, but I don't get to as much as I want. I should say that. Yeah. I do a lot of solo flying up here. Yeah. Um, but interesting enough, I saw more paramotors in my town that I wasn't aware of. Just I, people passing through or coming up to visit and fly this year than I have ever seen. I saw four or five different pilots, and I actually talked to and connected with two or three of them. So, and then I just recently found there's a couple of other pilots in Kalispell that I wasn't aware of that just friended me on Facebook. So. And that's about 90 miles away from where I live. And there's a lot of good flying over there. A lot of beautiful, there's another mountain range over there. It's a different mountain range. It's just really, it's right next to the um, glacier. So everybody knows about Glacier National Park. It's one of the, you know, most popular spots over here for beauty and stuff. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so Kalispell is close to that and Whitefish is right next to big mountain ski resort. So those, all those mountains are right there. And the glacier just sits on the other side of that. But I haven't had a chance to fly over there yet. I have flown in whitefish one time. I took off out of a soccer field, which I found out later you're not supposed to use. But I managed a landing and a takeoff there without an event. And I actually had some security guys looking at me, but they didn't approach me or anything. But it's, it's a beautiful area. I mean, there's a lot of different areas around here that are really awesome to fly. But you just got to be wary of the mountains and trees and um, but there's, you know, there's outs as long as you're cautious with what you're doing. So Justin in the chat is asking, are you close to Red Lodge? Red Lodge? Um, not really, no. Where, where I'm close to is Canada and Idaho. I'm right in the northwest corner, really close to where where Idaho, Sandpoint, um, Bonners Ferry, those areas in, in Idaho, the, the Panhandle. We're, we're next door to that, so we're up in the... The Cascade Mountain Range is right, right in my backyard. I got it. You might have seen in some of the pictures. That's my LZ. The okay. Libby Airport basically has the Cabinet Mountain Range, about five miles from it, and 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 uh, airstrips just nestled in the valley below those mountains. There were the highway, the Highway Two that runs through there, and and the airport. And there's nine. And then there's another set of mountains right on the other side that are about two thousand feet, and the other and the cabinets are um, about seven to eight thousand feet. Okay. So, Justin says you're in good elk area, I bet. Yes, I've spotted herds of elk from the air before. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. Huh. I did see some pictures on Facebook. You've got some beautiful mountains. Yeah, it's beautiful here. You see yeah. some pictures on Facebook, and you have a beautiful beard. <laughs> Actually, Steve, I, this is a regrowth from when you might have seen me at Salton. That was a four-year-old beard, and then I got bored and hot, and it was like April. And I was looking back at my phone. She's like, that was last year. Cut it. No, I said, it was this year. And I cut it in April. I think it was April 12th or something. And, and this is completely from that. So I start growing it again. I found wow. a video of you without a beard. Yeah. I like I the without beard. I don't, have, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I look like, I mean, I'm all right. But I used to have a shorter goatee for a lot of my years when I was younger. So didn't grow the big beard until later on. All right. Mr. Bill H is asking, he's all excited. Tell us about your home built trike because he has built his trike also. Okay. So the first one I built. Um, so when I first got into paramotoring, I was, I always knew that I would probably just go the more inexpensive route because I've been a fabricator and I've always worked with stuff and metal and building stuff. And um, I've been a mechanic for 30 years, you know, professionally and not professionally, but um so I w when I went to my first flight, I didn't even have a, a, a motor at that time. I had a wing and I just was going there with the intentions of maybe I'll meet somebody and I'll maybe find a motor or something. So 
And I ended up did meet a guy named Norm Smith. I don't know if you know him, but he's a paraglider pilot and paramotor pilot over in Seattle area. But uh, he uh, he's like, yeah, I just bought a new motor and I got this old one. It's in my garage. I've been sitting there. I never even used it. And so we, we made a deal on that thing and I got it really for a really good price. I think I paid. I think I got it for sixteen hundred dollars and then the coil was bad. And so he was nice enough to give me three hundred dollars and so I could buy a new coil. And so in, in all, I think I paid twelve hundred bucks for it. And I, so that thing was an old Synergy one. Uh, and if you know what that is, it's the paramotor that has the gas tank as the frame. So it's a really odd design. It's very rigid and there's no contour to it. It's just like two tubes going down and some, and you know, it had a Corsair motor on it and the motor ran really good. And it was very low hours. I mean, it looked almost new, but it was an old antique. It was like the first one Corsair ever made. But anyway, I ended up just hand designing a frame to fit that because the way that frame was, it was really unique. And I always knew I was going to trike launch in the beginning um, because of my, my back and my neck aren't the greatest. So I, in the beginning, I always knew that I would probably go trike launch. And so the way that thing was built, someone had welded on two little aluminum arms onto the tank or onto the the side. So they were going to put some different style swing arms on there. And I, and it just so happened that I was able to utilize that. And I, and when I made the frame, it just bolts bolts directly to that part. And then my first trike is a lot like, um, kind of like a fly pod sort of, I, I didn't really copy it, but I loosely copied that design a little bit just because it was kind of like, I don't know, it looked easy and, and, um, and simple. And I just wanted something that I was just going to, it was a flat flying niche. It wasn't designed to do any wing overs or just a grandpa cruiser, you know, just straight <laughs> level flight. So I, uh, just basically use mild steel tubing and I, and I formed all this out of my head. I didn't even really drop a plan or anything. I made have made a rough sketch at some point. I don't even remember, but I just kind of, I mocked everything up as I went. So I just went out there and just had everything sitting there and it just measure and cut and measure and cut and adjust it and weld and just kept going with it and you tried to keep it as light part. as I could. What's that? Bicycle parts. And, uh, and I did kind of use, utilize on the front. I used a bicycle um, headset. So I could take the, the, make my own fork out of that. Um, that was just so it pivot nice. I, I seen how people do with nylon and whatever. I just wanted something that would last and it was you know, easy. And so, and, and when I made my front forks, I just found some metal that was already pre-bent to the shape. And I just kind of cut that down. I'm real crafty at repurposing stuff. So I, it's, you know, I, I was able to use a lot of stuff just to build it. That was, um, you know, not necessarily for a paramotor, but I made it work. And um, I like the seat was out of a, for a bass boat that I found that was plastic and it was lightweight and, and it had places to screw into the bottom of it to attach it, you know, in a good manner. And, um, and I, you know, and I designed my hang points, um, made sure everything was, uh, the thrust line was really nice. You know, I made sure the thrust line was where we needed to be. And that was the main, um, thing that I knew I had to get right was the thrust line and the hang points. And so I had the hang points. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of studying just designs. I'd look at different trikes and, a lot of different YouTube stuff. And just, I mean, I just try to get as much information as I could before I started actually going through with what I did. And then it turned out right. Like the first time I flew that thing, it flew really good. Um, and I flew that for two years, the first trike. Um, and the engine still runs. I actually flew it a couple months ago. I fired it up after it sat for a year and I put a new prop on it. Cause I don't know if you've seen my through the helmet, helmet through the, the prop deal on YouTube no. That's my videos. I, so I had my helmet on and I forgot to strap it. I didn't buckle it. And my engine has a big opening, like a triangle between the netting and the back. Ooh. So when I took off, I was at Salt, I was at Sand Lake flying and I had already one time tried to launch and I, and my, um, it was really windy and it came up and it bent my cage back with this, with the, with the, when I did my launch and it, um, like the power forward, it just bent the cage and, and broke a prop right there. And so I ended up restringing the cage. I had a spare prop, fixed everything, put it all back together, went for my second flight. This is like, the, that was my first attempt of the whole the fly-in. So this is my second attempt of the fly-in. I got up in the air. I'm like, oh, cool. Everyone cheering. Yeah, you made it. And then freaking wham. I was probably a minute and a half into the flight. And I was over the dunes. So everything was fine. I had plenty of spots to land. It was no, it was no issue there. But I had my chase cam going. So it caught everything. It caught the helmet going through and exploding. And everyone at the camp said it sounded like a bomb going off. Because when that helmet hit the prop, I was just like, wham. I'm surprised nothing hit me. But luckily, you know, going forward and it going back, just it never, never, never hit me with, with the debris. Which video is that, Tori? What's that? Which video is that on your YouTube? Oh, is it just, it was oh crap! My helmet went through my prop. 
I don't see that. Oh, wait, I'm not looking at them all. I'll see if I can find it. And Maybe it's like my most viewed video. <laughs> Is it <laughs> upside down too? Part. What's that? Is it upside down as well? No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got such a kick out of that. That was hilarious when you started doing that. My friend Chris Altmeyer, he was like, dude, when Steve did that post, are you upset? I got to fly like Tory Pope. He said, I was laughing so hard. And he saw that. Yeah. Said that dest destroyed my scout. Um, that's my friend Chris Altmeyer. That was his scout. Um, I thought you were going to say Boomer. It just says, I, I says, oh crap, my I just uh, my helmet just went through my prop or something like that. I don't oh, think it got removed. It should be there. Uh, I'm not finding it. Weird. I wonder if Facebook deleted it or whatever, YouTube. I haven't been on there for a while to see it. But, um, oh, wait. Here here we go. I got it. I had to go to the other tab. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's on the video tab. Should we see it? Yeah, go ahead. Let's see if we can. Yeah, that was a that was a memorable day. And uh, I mean, it was cool, man. Someone came out and rescued me like right away. Like I was literally. Attempt to spam. Squirrel. Oh, Ooh, man. Yeah, that was a <laughs> shocker. Dang. Dang. Yeah, luckily it was like real open train. So I was like, yeah, whatever. This is how my day is going. <laughs> so, how was your first launch attempt ever? My first launch attempt on oh, that. How did you prepare for your first launch attempt ever with your home built? And uh, um, how'd that go well, for you? It, um, it was kind of a lot of trials and tribulations, actually, because that trike right there was the one that I actually followed on my first. You know, that was the one that I flew first, but um, it wasn't my first trike. So I ended up I had built two trikes before that. And the first machine I had was a Walker jet. And so I kind of got sucked into the whole Dale, Dale sit for, for, a, for a split second. And okay. so I had a Walker jet and I had a Sky SEMA um, wing that actually had the search and rescue logo on it. Um, and so I had, and I also did some uh, free flight too, before I actually, I kited for like a half a, for like a summer before I actually, you know, I didn't did some uh, free flight jumps off at Bunny Hill out in, in Montana, out by Kalispell, uh, Lake Flathead. There's a lot of open, there's a really nice place to do, do that over there. There's a really nice rolling hills and a nice bowl shape and whatever. So I trained myself out there and then built that first trike. And the engine was only an easy uh, Vitarazzi easy 100. So it wasn't a real big motor. And, um, and I was using Harbor Freight wheels on it and it was steel and it was just, and it was kind of a little bit higher up because the way those Walker jets, you know, the flat tops, they sit on those stands those skids that kind of set it up a little higher. So the, the center of gravity was a little higher on it, but yeah, so I did a couple test runs out there and my girlfriend, she was like my ground crew. We would, she would spend, I don't know how many hours she was with me when I was doing my training because it would be like all day we'd go out there and, and I'd, out there with the grasshoppers and whatever hot, you know, whatever we went all, all the time, as long as the weather was doable and I'd go out there and do stuff and, and try to fly. And then, um, so the first time I tried to get up on that thing, it was, it, I could tell right away, it just felt squirrely and something felt wrong. I, I got off the ground a little bit, but it just felt really freaking. I don't know, man, I could just feel that it wasn't quite right. And so I just, and, and I was trying to really hard trying to do it. And I kept going. And I mean, so many times that I didn't get off the ground and I was thinking, man, I'm so glad I didn't fly that day because I think I would have, I think that wouldn't have worked out that good the way it was. It was just such a small, it was a smaller wing. It was like a 24 meter wing. And, um, 
and I don't know, the hang points in that were a little bit lower because they're like a mid, mid rise hang point on that, those fixed arms or whatever. And it just felt kind of twitchy. And so I bagged that whole thing. I ended up selling the wing and the motor and all that. And I got all my money back out of it. Didn't lose any money. And then I built, I went and found the other one. I went to a charger 28 because I started studying and I was like, these chargers look really, actually I used a Muse 4 was my very first one. It was a Muse 4, real easy A-wing. Um, thing was just a slow turd, but it was super stable, super slave, real easy beginning wing. And so I got that wing and then I got, and it was all patched up and looked like crap. But the guy's like, yeah, I mean, he was, I got it from a guy out in a, gosh, I can't remember his name of the guy, but he was an instructor um, in Illinois or Indiana or some someplace like that. Um, might Florida. Have <laughs> it wasn't Florida. It wasn't Florida. It was one of those Midwest states. I think he was from Mexico. But I can't remember who it was. I can't. His name was Adam. Adam was his first name. I don't remember his second name though. But he was an instructor. Said he flew it. He guaranteed it would be good. And I think I paid a thousand bucks for it or something. Or maybe it was sixteen hundred bucks. I don't remember what it was. It was a little. Maybe it's fifteen. I don't know. A little bit it was of money. Like five grand. It was used, you know. And I just bought it, and I wanted to fly. And so I built that other trike. Once I went and found that other motor. At that fly-in, I went down in southern Idaho. It was a one-only. It was called Tyrone Fly-in, and they only did it one time because there was a big confrontation with police and some other stuff that happened because it was right next to a state park. Anyway, I don't know all the all the logistics of what happened, but the guy never did the fly-in again because he was so turned off by what happened. But anyway, I ended up hooking up with the guy there. I got a motor and uh, went home and built that new trike. And the first time I launched that thing, I mean, I laid it out all perfect and. Is your first flight on my first YouTube? flight. I don't have my first flight on YouTube, but my girlfriend has it somewhere on her phone, but I don't know where it's at. But anyway, it was perfect. First takeoff. I mean, it was the wing came up straight. I freaking took off. I just flew. I mean, it was a beautiful takeoff. And so and I just took off and I did one big circle around the, the patch. And I remember looking at the clouds, too, on that day. And it was like a lot of cumulus and like fairly it looked like a lot of activity might have been going on but it didn't feel like where i was at it was must have been in an isolated little valley because it didn't feel thermic at all and it was like two in the afternoon when i did make that flight but uh, i made that circle around and came back and there was power lines too that i had to come by and then drop in over the power lines because the road was there and then the the field i was using was just an old cow it was a big wide open cow pasture area that was like free range cattle but they had like big fences that like every so often there'd be like a fence or something and so you could open that gate and go in there or it was open or whatever. And then you just, and it was just a huge, wide open flat area. They had like a really nice kind of a grassy weird spot on one side next to like a dried up Creek bed. And then it was just kind of a dirt, a dirt patched, just really no grass, really high grass anywhere. So it was a really nice open, fairly flat area, but it was kind of dusty in the summer. But um, yeah, it was great. And the landing was perfect too. I came in and she was expecting me to do some weird landing. It was just like a three point touchdown, just greased the landing. And I don't know if a little bit of that came from my previous history with ultralight aircraft, because I did fly some ultra fixed wing ultralights in the 90s. And my dad had one that I soloed in um, after three lessons. My pilot instructor said I was a natural at that, too. And so I was trained in probably five different aircraft during my training period. But um, and I actually flew a hang glider trike at one of those at one point, which was weird because the controls are completely opposite from three axis. But uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, the first flight was really good. Nice. And, uh, and then I actually just kept going with it and uh, went to the, my first flying with six flights under my belt. Went to the Sand Lake fly-in. Uh, and that's okay. where I met Chris Altmeyer. We met there. I got one question. So when your helmet came off, did you have your chin strap on? I did not. That's why it came off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I forgot to buckle it. Now every time I check it, that's one thing I check every time now. Well, you know, if you'd shave that off, you'd, uh, you'd yeah. be able to see it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just pull it back. <laughs> okay, somebody else want to ask Wendy's question? Yeah, Wendy's question. Um, was that the scariest thing that you've experienced? The scariest thing I've experienced, and I was actually talking to my girlfriend about this the other day. I said, if they ask me this question, I know exactly what I'm going to say. Um so I was flying with my buddy, Chris Altmeyer and Skylar. I, I, I don't know if Skylar Costa was there. I can't remember. It was me and Chris and I don't know, a couple other guys. Oh, I think it was, um, gosh, who was it? It was one of our PW crew. We got a, we got a tight crew that we all fly together most of the time when I'm there and just in general. Anyway, I can't remember if it was Travis or um, another guy. But I, we, we were at the beach flying. So we we're like, we went to Chehalis. Not Chehalis, we went to um, Kapalis. Kapalis is an actual airport on the beach. So planes can land there and stuff. 
but and during certain times of the year, you can't go past a certain point because of the air traffic. But um, other, once the air traffic during the certain times of the year, you can go there. Like I think it's from Memorial Day till like April or something. You can go in there and fly and do whatever. But you can still go in there and fly if you're a paramotor, you know, because you're an aircraft. But so we decided to go down there and all go fly in there that day. And we got there and it was just like fog bank, you know, like, oh, man, we're socked in all the way there. Blue sky. And as soon as we got like, I don't know, five miles within the beach, started seeing the fog and. So like, we're going to go check it out, wait it out, see what happens. And so we're all sitting there. I got my trike all put together and everything. And I'm sitting there waiting and waiting. And everyone's, everyone's just kind of looking at each other and they're like, who's going to go first. And uh, I'm like, I'll go. Cause I kept seeing like little breaks, you know, I'm like, Oh, I see a break. Oh, I see a break. So I'm like, I'm going to go for it. So I got in that thing and I had my strobe too. Like I usually fly at the strobe if it's any kind of visibility or whatnot took off. And Chris, there's a video. I don't know if I sent it to you, but you can just see me disappear. He's like gone. I mean, like I take off, I start doing my, my extent and, you know, taking off. And then, I mean, I'm not even that far out of my, out of my takeoff. And then I just disappear. No, I didn't. So I got above the fog bank. And I like, once I got up there, I was like, holy crap, I cannot see anything. I don't, I lost total dis, I was totally disoriented. I couldn't tell. I knew where the, I knew where the ocean was. Cause I could see that. And I knew where the shore was, but I couldn't see land. I couldn't see where my windsock was or anything. I had no reference point of where I was. And so I just started doing tight circles. I'm like, well, if I just kind of stay in a circle and stay above it and I'll just look for breaks. And I kind of went one down way, a little ways, come back down. And I kept trying to gauge like how far I had gone and how far I'd come back. And I just got so mixed up. Like I was like, man, I know I'm not like close to any like trees. Cause I knew there was trees along the coastline up high there. And I was just trying to give myself a good barrier, but I never could find like where I came from. So I just kept freaking, um, you know, hanging out there until I could see a break in the cloud. I, every now and then I could look down, and I could see the shore. I'm like, oh, there's the ground. There's the ground. So then I was like, all right. I was like, finally, it opened up into a spot where it was big enough that I could, um, I said, I'm just going to land this thing, you know, because I don't, I, it doesn't look like it's opening up at all. And so I'm just going to, you know, and I see this spot where I can see, I got re visual reference of the ground. I'm just going to go in there and land and make sure and i had and i kept looking because there's like logs and all this other stuff on the beach you know and I, I had to make sure that i could land there and not you know hurt myself or something and so i finally looked and when i was coming in i could see that it looked pretty good so i'm like right, i'm committing so i just and, and then it kind of socked in again like right as i landed i was able to land there and it was just kind of more fog and uh and it was like a quarter mile down the beach from where i took off so i ended up just packing it and just pushing it pushing it back on the wheels because I have wheelies. So it, it goes on the sand real good. But yeah, that's the scariest I've been as far as flying. I mean, I've been in some turbulence and stuff, but nothing serious like where I was scared for my life or anything, but being wow. in the fog without any, with being disoriented like that and not having any reference for anything. It's, that's kind of freaky. I tagged your first video to your Facebook if they want to look at it. Okay. Ooh. Steve, why don't you ask Kevin's or Louise? Facebook. Okay. Easy. Um, Kevin can fly wants to know, have you ever launched up over a dune? Of course I have. <laughs> you must know him. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my coolest launches ever, man. And my friend Caleb Coke was there with the camera. Um, so I had my new charger wing and that's the one that's in the background there. We were at Moses Lake and, um, and it is weird there cause the winds kept switching. And we were in a pretty flat spot, but it seemed like more often than not, because we, we decided to fly at a different spot. Normally, we fly at the one end where all the RVs park. It's a nice flat spot, nice area. There's kind of a hill at one end, but it's kind of a tricky area because there's some high-tension power lines right there, and you can literally fly underneath of them. And and I've actually launched from underneath of them because the wind was coming from the, the way where I needed to go forward. And I just said, I'm like, well, if I pop up my wing under the lines and head that way, I'll be okay. And I've actually, I haven't landed under them, but I, I've patterned like super close to them. And I hate flying by them things because they just, Wait. that's like my biggest fear is like power lines. Like I don't want to be near that shit. I'd rather be in a tree or something, but power lines, I don't want to be on them. Anyway, so we decided for some reason, they decided to put the camp at the other end this year because it's like an annual thing we do every year. We call it the end of summer and it's summer flying at Moses. Um, so they went to this other spot and it seemed like more often than not, we were either taken off down this hill, down this dune or we were taken off kind of, if you could walk up the one side and take off this way, or you could kind of go the other way. And it was kind of a slight uphillish. And then behind it was like the rise, like the big, the big hill. And so I set up and I was and my, my idea was I'm just going to set up kind of going at the angle 
at that where it just kind of rises up a little bit, you know, and just kind of go that way with it. And, uh, and that's the way the wind was coming. And I set up for it and everything got in there. And so when I started taking off, the wind kind of switched and I was like, well, I'm just going to go with the wind. And it, it switched to coming straight down that dune straight up, you know, so I was pointing straight at it. And I just, so I started my roll out and I was moving. So I'm like, and then, and then it kind of, as I rolled, it, st- it started to turn towards the dune. And I'm like, well, I'm already committed. I'm just going to go for it. And I just gave it full throttle and it started climbing up the dune. And as my wing got lift, I was probably halfway up that face of the dune. And then it caught lift and I just started flying up and I was climbing faster than the dune was actually rising, but I just made it over the top and then kind of peeked over it. And um, yeah, it was nuts. Like, uh, yeah, that's Moses right there. That's a beautiful spot. That's potholes. So all these little lakes like joined together and um, they formed it. I mean, there's like little inlets in all these little spots. And then out in there, and then there's some fields close by too. There's a sod farm. That's right. The sod farm's right there. I love that spot because it's just like perfect, perfect flat grass. Like super, it's like golf course green grass, you know, like, like putting green stuff. And, and so there's a lot of cool little areas right around the lake that you can go fly. And then there's the lake itself. And, and you, and there's so much to cover over on the lake. There's so many cool little nooks and crannies. And like last year was the first time I really love going to between the hay bales. That's one of my favorite things over there too is well, they got a corn is lake. Moses Lake is a uh, halfway between um, Spokane and Seattle in Washington there. So oh, it's okay. probably, it's probably about an hour and a half from east of or west of Seattle, uh, Spokane. So it's, it's out there in the, there's kind of a flat area in between Spokane and, and uh, where the mountains start again, right there in Sonomish or whatever. So yeah. in between there is, is Moses Lake and Tri, uh, Tri-Cities. And uh, um, there's another town there too. I always stop at. Um, oh, what the heck is the name of that little place? I don't know. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but. Skylar Ellens- wants Ellensburg. To know- Ellensburg. But- Skylar oh. wants to know how many attempted front flips have you completed? Oh, att- oh you mean like crashing forward? I'm not sure. <laughs> What's he talking about? Oh, oh, that one. Yeah. The front flip. Uh, I've only done one of those like forward. I've rolled it four times sideways, but, and I usually, it's like once a year, I'll do something stupid and roll it. You gotta do it once a year. Yeah. I mean, just once a year, just for fun. You know? <laughs> just to make sure everything's still holding together. Is but, that yeah, like- that poor Pat, man, I've, I've rolled it probably including the front forward thing, which really bent the heck out of it. I just got it fixed. I, I bent it all back and left a lot that flying. Like I was the first time that I crashed and fixed my unit and was able to, to continue flying. Cause usually I'll mess it up. And it's like, I'll drive all this way. Like Sand Lake. I drove like 11 hours, got there first flight, blew it. Didn't, didn't get to fly. Then the second flight blew my helmet. Then I've done that before. Like I'm yeah. to is this place where we go and it's Dimitri's flying. I don't know if you know Dimitri to Susan. Yeah the guy that does the iris so i've yeah. known dimitri for a long time i met him before he even was a paramotor builder he dimitri was, was the one that gave me my uh tandem flight in drag at salt and sea last year i've actually got one of dimitri's engine parts one of his, his the very first reduction that he made on his cnc machine for his predator motor that he used to do the um, yeah. harbor freight predator he was building those before he started like really doing the other stuff but he was trying to do a, a predator build to make it like off the shelf, like go-kart parts to make a paramotor. And he had it made, he did it. He flew around with it for a while. Um, and just, and then we talked, I ended up saying, Hey, you should just go a regular motor, like, you know, an actual manufactured motor. And, and I think he finally ended up doing it. I don't know if he took my advice, but I, I did mention it to him a few times, but, but yeah, that guy, he's cool. I've met him. I met him through YouTube. You know, I met him when he was just doing his crazy self-training hang glide. He was doing uh, just free flight and jumping off hills. And then he started doing the pair. I didn't even follow him or really knew anything about him. I just, his sense of humor and his wit. Yeah. Like, and I he's just duck too. Yeah. He's and then, so you meet him in person. You're like, Oh wow. Yeah. And if you've seen some of the stuff he did prior, like he had a Subaru that he like tore all the way down and like re- made his own manifolds and like, he's pretty crafty. So. Oh yeah. That's this kind of person he is. Everybody in this community is way more smarter than me. So I always surround myself. <laughs> By those people, I just have a good time. I'm like, I don't know what I'm, a word is. Smart. I'm just mechanical smart. I'm, I can yeah. build stuff and fabricate stuff, but we're at uh, 37. <laughs> Did you guys want to do a spinny wheel? Jade, are you gonna lip sync or are you gonna unmute? <laughs> we're gonna do something for a second here for 44 okay. seconds. 
Pennsylvania PPG is here to turn your dreams into a reality. They can supply you with safe and quality equipment to help your flying dreams. They carry a wide variety of equipment to meet your needs from a beginner to expert foot launch to wheels with all the parts and accessories needed along the way. If there's something you're looking for and you don't see it, contact Kenny personally and he can do his best to get what you need. Pennsylvania PPG sells quality product such as Power to Fly, Ozone, Mac Para, BGD, Dudec, and all parts and accessories you need. Remember, the sky is your playground, so if you're in the Pennsylvania area, reach out to them and have them help you get into the sky. Mm, I just burned my tongue. <laughs> all right, Eric, spinning wheel? Yeah, Eric just tried intervening in that commercial. I'm in the chat. I <laughs> chat. I'm on my phone, so I'm like, I'm gonna look at my look at the. Where show. are we giving away? Um, <laughs> okay, so, so tonight, that, that tonight we have um, a Pennsylvania PPG shirt, but it. I only have two large left, so I'm giving away one large tonight. Remember, it's a large, and then I have new stickers from Houston PPG. Uh-huh. Breezy. And also, I'll get out a Stay Bad sticker and also um, one of the phone lanyard things, if you guys are interested in that. So, first person gets first pick out of the four items. So, you can go with a large shirt, Houston PPG, or Stay Bad, or the little phone lanyard. Little Grease it up. Grease it up. Oh, crap. I think I forgot to grease it. <laughs> you forgot the grease. That's odd. I know. <laughs> Just got coagulated butter on it. <laughs> oh, <Andrew> Anderson's in <laughs> there. In the the who did that? <laughs> no, there is no suspense on this one. It's pure motor vision. Pure motor vision. Okay, Paramotor Vision, if you're in the chat, no. let us know which of the four nice. items you want Be nice to sent to you. It's you must again, be present or... to win. <laughs> and I'll another say, one or no? Yeah. And also um, hit me up in uh, Facebook, private message me your address. Look at Travis. The Spinny Wheel is brought to you by 1UP Adventures. They've been sending me a bunch of free stuff lately, so... Yeah, I am a shill. Thank you. Is paramotor vision here? Are you kidding? It's going to be back with Brandy. <laughs> no, no ro- roll it again. He doesn't get it. Oh. Just say no, Randy. Say no. <laughs> say no, Randy. You won, but say no. <laughs> One what? Oh, dude, we got Aaron. Oh, Travis, A-Rone. we just you. Dang it, Travis. Aaron. Aaron or A-Rone. Bill H. Yeah. Aaron <laughs> I. All right. Good eye, mate. As soon as we hear from Paramotor Vision. Well, uh, if we don't hear um, before the next drawing, um, we will let A, A- Ron pick. A Ron. So, how you say it. A Ron. <laughs> who do we have in? Oh, there's Paramotor Vision. Paramotor Vision. Where? Where? Say what? I'll take the shirt. shirt. And it's a large. Is that going to be okay? What is his name? Um, I'll show you the Pennsylvania. When you wash it and dry it, it'll be extra medium. Front and then the back. And the wide? Yeah. One. Just let me know right now if if large is okay. Paramotor Vision is Eric's other account. No, it's not. (laughs) 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 I'm watching him. He's uh, working on my... Jacket right now. What's that? You're free calling. Uh huh. Paramotor vision is large, okay. 
All right. Um, while we're waiting for that, give me one more second. 55 seconds. Do you want to experience flight in its purest and most exciting form? If so, paramotoring is for you. Your flying adventures begin here at Cache Valley Paramotor, where they will train you on everything you need to know about the safest and most affordable form of flight. All of their instructors are USPPA certified with over 30 years combined experience flying in locations all over North America. They're also dealers for all of the top of the line paragliding and paramotor equipment and can cater to your every need. Their instructors are well versed in both paragliding and paramotor skill set. This along with the unique training environment that Cash Valley provides allows them to teach students the necessary skills to fly in diverse locations all over the world. Reach out to Cash Valley Paramotor at Cash Valley ppg.com All right. Why am I out? Who is this little gentleman here? Is this Jared. Jared. That's my name. Jared? Yeah, it's Jared. 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 Yeah. Jared. Are you also I'm in your bucket. I was just going to say are you also called Bucket? Yep. <laughs> I watched a video and I heard your name was Bucket. On my birthday, I'm going to be seven. Wow. That's awesome. That's a little while. So yeah, we Bucket's his nickname. He's got a pretty funny nickname. I like it. Yeah. My last name is Pope or Jared Pope. Okay. Pope or Jared Pope. I, I got a question for you, Bucket. I forgot my middle name. <laughs> Bucket, I got a question for you. I got a question for you. What? Are, are you going to fly paramotors like your dad? I'm hoping he will make it to see his power so I can fly and sit in there with him when I'm a kid. Awesome. So you want to go on a flight with him? That'd be yeah, cool. Yeah, he really enjoys it. I've taxied him around in my trike with me a little Does bit. Does he hang up? No, I don't know where he's at. Yeah, Take who knows break. where he went? He had to get <laughs> All right. I actually have a video on my Facebook, I guess, of my first flight. Oh, yes. I, I was right waiting. There, uh, she I just will, put it on there. So yep, if you want to I will play it right now. Give me one second. I have, I have a question up. for you. I'm back. That's it. Oh. Come on. Yeah, so that's my training area. You can see it's kind of flat and desolate. But I picked it so there was no trees, so I'd have a lot of bird, you know, a lot of a lot of space to practice. Okay. I have a question for you, Jade. Hang on one second. Questionable music, I see. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's my woman's playlist in her car, I guess. She was out of the door open or something. Do you ever comb your, do you ever comb your beard, Tori? I, I like it nappy, actually. I do comb it sometimes, but mostly I do because it has a natural curl to it, so I'll usually just leave it. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, there's like a little bit of oscillation on that first flight, but it wasn't terrible. They're all pretty still because I mean, this was after a, a year and a half, I think, of trying different stuff. How do you feel about the tires that you use? Because it just seems like those are like the sort of tires you like that I would prefer if I ever went to trike. The wheelies? Because you see so many skinny ones. Yeah, yeah. I really love the wheelies. Like on here on this trike, I had skinny ones on there. I've actually got um, I've got some uh, old uh, Harbor Freight, their uh, wheelbarrow, uh, like hardened rubber. They don't have tubes in them, which are nice. I'm going to take those next time I go to Utah and Brad Rope is flying because I got two flat tires on them wheelies from them goat head thorns over there. Oh, cool. they'll, and I nasty. just got the last. Um, the thing about wheelies is really cool is you can fix flat tires with the soldering iron on those. You heat up a soldering iron and you just kind of like I do a little weld with it on the, on, uh -huh. the, on, the, on the plastic rubber wheel and it seals it right up. It just kind of smooths it over really? the hole. 
So I love that about them. I didn't really notice that until after I realized I had a flat and started getting online to see how to fix it. But um, so yeah, they can be easily repaired. Man, those thorns are nasty. Oh, they are bad. So next time I go there, I'll be taking the hard rubber wheels if I still have some, or I'll get some for it if I sell yeah, that. Flying Circus has a lot of those. And we're in yeah, Crocs. Right. I'm like, that's what am I know. stepping in? Yeah, those are terrible, man. I remember riding my buddy Suron. He had those brand new five thousand dollars Suron electric bicycle thing, and I rode through a patch of those on it, and they were just like clustered over the whole wheel. Oh yeah. Oh, I bet he's just uh -oh. up there like screaming because he's so excited that he's in the air. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty pretty stoked about that fly. She is just she still gets emotional when she watches that video because it was like she, I wasn't screaming. I was actually just concentrating on everything. I was just I was really calm the whole time. I was just looking around and just judging doing? everything and Hated. like looking at different places. Of, well, if I gotta land here or if I gotta land there, and I was just really taking it all oh, in, shit. but still analyzing everything and just looking at stuff. Up and, there bucket flying? But uh, yeah, it was a good flight. I'll always remember that first one. Definitely. Well, thanks for sharing that. <clears throat> so what's been your, uh, like some of your favorite moments or experiences? And this doesn't have to even necessarily, you seem like a community guy like me too. So it could be about that, but like from either just flying or, or the friends you meet, like what's been your best moments? I'm sorry. I, I, my dog's barking and stuff. I couldn't hear everything you were saying there. You're making what's mine go your, crazy. <laughs> what's been the favorite parts of uh, of your flying journey so far? Either it's the flights oh, or the you. community. Oh, a lot of it's yeah, all the friends I've met because I have met so many cool people from just from the paramotor community. Um, that's my favorite thing because I have friends that I like. Chris, we are like he calls me like every other day. He's probably my best friend that I've met, you know, and um, and we're we still really close. He's been over here about three times to fly with me and surprised me on my birthday one day they rigged it all up too like made a bed in here and said it was for a girlfriend and everything and and then he just showed up on my birthday and, and like surprised me it was trippy but yeah it's like the camaraderie all the all the people and just and, and going to see in new places i love to explore new areas so just um you know and, and everyone everyone that i know that i fly with is just like amazed on the dedication that i put in for to drive because all the flying that i That's go to are a lot farther away than from the people that usually go to them and they're like how far do you drive oh, 11 hours dang you know and it's like oh it's nothing for me and, and you know so. yeah i was a little intimidated by uh chris altmeyer at first because i met him this past year and i didn't know who he was but he just went up yeah. to me and like, you steve and he had the serious look i'm like oh he always had that scowl on his face man he's funny but yeah but i'm weird and yeah. i expect scorn well i remember you from our campfire you like did wand into our camp last year at salton for a minute and briefly kind of walked over and just kind and of i was there. afraid I was like, no, I'm like, Dave. That's hey, Steve. Chris is like, I think that was Steve-O. I'm like, oh, okay. And then, and I didn't see any more after that, but if oh, I see speaking you again, of your friends we'll, tonight, be, so we'll be, we'll be, uh, we won't be strangers. Just, we'll be fucking buddies. I just got a friend request from Matt Glass on Facebook, so I got a new buddy. Oh, yeah, Matt Glass is cool. I've met him at Moses. He's a good guy. Now I, now I just got to get Caleb and Skyler, and I'll feel yeah, better. Yeah, for sure. Him. Yeah, that's part of the, the Pacific Northwest crew there. And I just met Matt Glass. He's a, he was a new pilot at Moses, and that was the first time I met him. He actually um, 3D printed me uh, my uh, my uh, chase cam that I have right now. Nice. Yeah. He's all into that 3D printing stuff. I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm a, When it comes to computer stuff, I'm not that good at it yet. I mean, I can manage, but I'm always learning that stuff. It's not my strong point. I, I am not useful whatsoever, so... I always I can like edit videos and I'm I want to get better editing because that's where my I love doing photography and I love making videos, but I'm just not good at making videos that are awesome yet. Your so, selfies are way more beautiful than mine though. <laughs> I mean by far. From a scale yeah. of one to Steve, they're like a 15. <laughs> hey, funny. Pennsylvania PPG is in here. He just missed his commercial. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> we saw it. Aaron, I I need to know what you want if um paramotor visions going with a shirt um do you want houston ppg stay bad or that phone lanyard little tether he's gonna want to stay bad because he has the other two okay he can answer too yeah but he was like texting me and oh like, okay <laughs> all right um bucket what's your question um you want to ask Steve. What's your question? Um, 
Do you know some memes that's super funny? Because I know two super funny memes. Stevie's talking to you. <laughs> Do I know some funny memes? I I have two super funny memes. Yeah? Let's, what are they? He showers with Pantene. I got one my own to keep me clean. And, <laughs> and the Iron Man. Kids today, I tell you. Mm. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> no, kick him off. Here, you're taking over. You can be the guest. We'll talk to him for the rest of the night. I said the one to me. All right. Um, Wendy's asking, since you're self-taught, how long how long did it take you to trust and use your trim system? Okay, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, I didn't use trims for quite a while. So on the um, on my first wing, it didn't have like a trim range at all. It was just a tiny little thing, and it was so small. I mean, it was like two inches or something. I don't even know if it did anything. And then, um, then I went, I, I flew the Muse for, for like eight flights. And then I was like, this thing is slow. And so, and I, and, and, and I knew that cause I went to the, Bye. I went to the fly the first, I'm hey, go eat okay. my dinner. I went to the first flying with it. And, um, of course all my buddies are like, you know, leaving me behind. And, and I was like, man, this thing's just slow. I want something a little bit faster, but still stable and everything. So I really liked what I was seeing on the charger. Everyone was like, charger's awesome. You know, it's launch is really nice. And I was already familiar with the Mac, Mac Parrix of the Muse. So I was like, I'm going to get the charger. And so I flew that for like after my eighth flight or something like that. I got the charger and then started flying that. And I think I left the trims neutral for, I would say, half a year maybe. I didn't even mess around. I was just like working on everything else, just flying it and figuring out stuff and just enjoying flying. I wasn't really concerned about going faster or anything. And then I started messing with the um, – the trim some more, you know, and then realize, oh, I can trim out. It's just cool, you know. And and it and the charger's trim range is pretty mellow. It's not like it's super noticeable, you know. I that's my dinner. So I then, I um, so I would say I probably flew my, you know, two two I'll years, two years without you know really mess with the trim a lot. And then I then later after I started getting a little more comfortable, then I'm like, hey, I'll see if I can get there a little, you know, come back and see if I can get a little bit quicker coming back with the trims open and stuff. And so I'd get the I'd open the trims up on it, and um, but never touch tip steer. That thing had tip steer. The charger has a tip steer system too, and I never messed with that at all until last year. And um, so then I got the Piper after flying the charger for like three years. And I decided, hey, I want to step up. All my buddies are flying super fast wings. Like Chris had a hard drawn three. Um, but on the charger with my big heavy trike, that thing scoots like with the weight, the extra weight on that thing. It, 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 he's surprised how quick it was. He's like, man, I noticed that you were, you were, you were pulling ahead, but I had to open trims to catch you, you know? So he would, and, and so then he was like, that thing's not that slow. You know, I'm like, well, it feels like it's a little slow compared to when you blow by on bar and you're just like later, dude. I'm like, hell with that. So, you know, so I really wanted, I wanted to keep up with my buddy, Chris. So I ended up buying the Piper and, uh, and just this year, 25, 25. Yeah. 25. It's so it's a three meters smaller than the, the charger and uh, the takeoff is just a little tiny longer, not much really, but, um, the, the glide on that thing is really nice. Like when I cut throttle and just like glide back to my LZ or something, it, it's got a really a way better glide than the charger does. Um, just normal glide. But, um, so this year I decided I was going to get speed bar hooked up because I watched a bunch of guys with trikes and I was just looking at the Piper too. When I, when I got that, I was looking, I was like, Hey, I want to figure out a way to hook up speed bar. And so I saw these European guys where um, they had speed bars hooked up to their little main trikes and they were flying Pipers. And so I messaged one of the guys on a YouTube video. and said, Hey, how are you hooking up your speed water bar? Malone. Okay. Chill out. I was, I was, did you just say water Malone? Yes. He did, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, he um he messaged me back and said, Yeah, I got it on a little bungee cord and it's just kind of attached to my trike there and it lets the speed bar it holds Steve, it in place so it doesn't drag on takeoff and landing, but it you, lets Steve. it flex when you push it. And so I rigged up the right length and I just got a bungee cord from the hardware store and rigged it up on the front of my trike there and and I uh, was able to hook speed bar up. And so I, I put it up, I put you, it on Steve. the on the piper and uh and the Piper's got a crazy trim range. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that wing, but the trim range on that thing is like 10 inches long. It's crazy how big it is. 
And when you drop trim on that thing, you know you drop trim. It doesn't be like, oh, I might have dropped trim. No, that thing is like, okay, you just drop trim, and it just starts moving. And then with bar, so this year was the first time that I actually was on tip steer, full bar, full trim, flying low, like at Moses Lake, those little pothole things. And I felt like I was like Luke Skywalker on my freaking, you know, flying the freaking canyon. It was just like swooping around stuff. And it was the most amazing feeling because I had ultra, ultimate control with bar because I could, I could let off bar and gain altitude really fast if I needed to. And also just having the tip steer lock, that piper on tip steer is like on rails. And it's, it's just like, you just, you just basically think where you want to go with that thing with those in your hand and just, you don't want to give it too much, but I'm getting used to how it does it. And it's, it's amazing. I love, it's like so much fun wow. being on that. I'm pretty like, excited to tie in tip steer pretty soon on my new well, I've never done the 2D thing. That's my next step is trying to Everybody tells things. me it's on rails. I bought a smaller wing and I'm ready to do it. I what are you flying what, now? Um, I'm going down to a 21 meter solo. So okay. Well, so you're, nine I mean, wing. I didn't okay, you're gonna do that solo though. Yeah, yeah, so I okay. went from a 24. I'm the slowest guy in the pack, just about a smaller one, but I'm gonna find the 2D. But I will tell you, it's not the size of the trim range that counts, it's the ratio to the speed with the speed bar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what the thing about the Piper. Is the Weezy, Jane? Yeah, the Piper speed bar is only like is like 70 30, so it's 70 trims, 30 speed bar. So the speed bar doesn't give it a whole lot of extra. Mine's 50 50. It yeah, sucks. Dudak does that a lot. I don't know why I stuck with the solo. I should have did something else like Hadron. I was like, yeah, I'm still screwing around. Crazy wing, you know, unless you're, I don't know. I, I'm thinking of the Hadron for, I want, I love the efficiency because Chris, he flies that thing and I've seen him like come back. And I mean, his gas is like, dude, did you actually, were, you went the same distance as me and you got the half, you know, double the fuel almost. I should have got a Hadron. Like I was ready for that, but. I yeah, think next year I'll be ready for one. I might demo one at Salton this year. I want to demo some different wings. I've never, that's one thing is I've only flown the Piper and the Charger and the Muse. And um, and then I had that Sky wing that I flew, but it was just, I only flew it free flight. And that's never, my goal this year because I've only flown two wings, but I've got access to every Dudek and BGD right next door. I need to just go up and try a bunch. So I'm like, this is what I like instead of just, yeah, but I'm like that too. Like I even after I bought the Piper, because I had another, I had my first charger, the one that's in a lot of my videos. So I bought a second charger, the one that's in the background right there. I bought a different color. My first one was the orange, blue, and white one. And then I uh, and I wore that thing out, and it was. I mean, I didn't wear wear it out. It, it had some use. Let's just say that, and it still is a good wing. I actually sold it to a guy that posts videos all the time of him doing his progress, which is cool to see. Another guy learning to fly on on one of my wings. Um, and he's really excited and shares with me a lot, but, um, so, but I just love the way the charger flies like here in Montana. I do a lot of Creek bed. Like I'm down into this little Creek bed where I've got just enough room for my wing in there and I'm looking at trees and I'm down below the tree line skimming this Creek, you know, and there's bald eagles shooting off to the sides. And I'm just like meandering through this Creek bed all along, you know, and there's a couple spots where you got to kind of raise up over these certain trees or then you can drop back down in there or across a bridge or whatnot, but there's no power lines in there. Um, and so you can go for quite a ways. There's a couple different sections like that that are really wide. And there's some that are really wide where you can like fly around in there and then they get narrow or whatever. But, and then every now and then you'll see a house like tucked away in there and people are sitting on their porch and you go flying by like treetop level, like below treetop level on this thing. And people will just come out with their cameras and it's like, what the hell just flew by my house? You know, they didn't <laughs> expect that. And oh, I, I want to interrupt for one second. I want to tell everybody seeing I forgot that stick around for the outro if you can, or if you can watch it later. Um, and then Tori, when you get a chance, if you would kind of be interested in doing my request. Your for... request. I might, I might mess around. I'm we'll see. Okay. <laughs> right. I don't know if it's going to be anything fantastic. But... It will. Yeah. <laughs> for you mere mortals, it will be fantastic. But I don't know. So stick around for one more commercial here. Okay. A Tory Pope commercial. Hand gestures. Watch it. Nope. <laughs> okay. Are we supposed so, to? Be any other questions in the chat? I have one question. Okay. Um, what's on your bucket list, Tori? My bucket list? Yes. Oh man. Um. <clears throat> I really want to get to either Moab or like, um, like I really want to fly like Sedona, but bucket list would probably have to be Iceland. 
Oh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, a bucket list? Is there if I could swing list? it, I don't know if I ever will in my lifetime because of the, the cost of the trip and all the stuff to get over there. But yeah, I see the Ryan, the Ryan Southwell videos and that guy's th- photography is phenomenal. And I just, man, that place looks like magic. You do better selfies than that man does, though. You got that yeah. on him. Okay. Have you ever considered doing any competitions or, no. or any, like, cross country? I do. What I want to do, I do like to do some cross country flying. I, um, after watching, uh, I watched that fifty times guy. Yeah, Harley. Yeah. Harley. yeah, and I, I knew of him. I, I heard of him, but I didn't really know everything about it. But <laughs> no, since I was young, I've always been interested in like, like the barnstormer lifestyle. Like, I don't know if you ever read that. Wrote that. Uh, there's a book called Illusions by Richard Bach. And, um, and he also wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel. I don't know if you've read that one, but no. it's like, the, it's like, it's an awesome book, but it's about a, it's like the third person, like a, a the mind of a seagull and what he's going and he's trying to like beat the speed of a Falcon. So he's just like, it's it, the way it's written is amazing. It's just, it's, you wouldn't think it would be like that. <clears throat> but anyway, I just always want to do like the barnstormer thing. Like you just like, fly somewhere and camp under your wing and, just under the stars, you know, and just go to random places and fly around and just go somewhere and just be free. So I, I would really like to do <clears throat> something like that where I would just take a week maybe and just go go somewhere and just try to figure out a trip I could take and just be unsupported. Some go so like, I'm going to fly from here to like Arizona or fly from here to somewhere. I mean, Tucker got started his uh, race in Polson, which isn't that far from here. It's probably 150 miles from here where, they, where he did that. Icarus race that was he started here and ended up in Las Vegas, Nevada, I think, Las Vegas or someplace like that. Yeah. So something like that would be kind of cool one day just to try to trip, do a trip like that. Yeah. Fly camping for sure. Yeah, that would be cool. I've actually got all the gear to do some fly camping, and I was going to go last year. <clears throat> I actually found a spot, landed out, checked it out, had everything figured out, and then a fire came through and burned everything up. So. <laughs> lands and I actually landed up there on the top of this hill and looked over the the flat, Flathead Lake. It was a beautiful view. I bet the stars would have just been amazing. So if you've ever seen that Orion Southwell video of fly camping <laughs> in Montana, it was that same spot, but it was just another like one hill over from that. Okay, we've got a couple of questions. Stop switching them on me. Um, the guys <laughs> want to know your favorite flight. My favorite flight. Oh man. That's crazy. I'm trying to think what my favorite flight would be. Yeah, skip it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> probably, um, probably at Moses. There was like a there was like this one flight we did. It was sunset flight, and there was, it just had all the guys together. You know, there's probably six or seven of us, all just flying together, and you know, everyone's just doing just like it was beautiful. Like the sun was setting, and all these birds were like flying on the water. It was just it was like picturesque. It was just so beautiful and just so cool, and just everybody was like totally in their zone. You know, and we were just, it was just, I think that was probably one of my favorite flights was there at Moses with all the guys. Okay, Dewey, do you want to read this one? Uh, yeah, Gen C, um, curious. Uh, do you feel you were more successful teaching yourself compared to learning from someone else? I think that, <laughs> I think I did okay. I mean, I never got into a situation where I felt like, I wish I would have had someone show me this. Dad. I mean, I, I did a lot of research though. I mean, I think what I did, it took more time than if I went to a class, but I've talked to a lot of people, you know, and they show you basically once you learn the basic skills and they see that you're a competent pilot, you know, enough to send you on your own, you're pretty much learning on your own from that point anyway. And um, so, yeah, I mean, and I felt pretty confident in myself um, because I had had some aviation experience with ultralights and I've, you know, I've been an RC pilot too for a lot of years. And so I knew a lot about, you know, a general aviation and aerodynamics and just how things work. And, and I'm also pretty anal and meticulous. So I figured, you know, I'm a good mechanic. So I trusted my skills mechanically there too, because I maintain all my own stuff and build all my own stuff and, and, and you know, do all my own overhauls and I just all that. So, and I built, I built my own throttle. I mean, I built a lot of stuff just from scratch. And so I think, the overall skills are there were some times where I thought, man, you know, I don't really know what you don't know. There's, you know, going up there and just figuring things out, you know, um, just like anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Now I'm a very, I feel very confident in my skills. 
But there was times, you know, I was just being real cautious in the beginning, you know. I remember when I first started flying, I didn't crank real hard turns. I was really, really, really easy with everything, you know. I never tried to overdo anything. Um, just and, and, and if there was a, a place where I felt where I, I was lacking, I would just get on YouTube and maybe try to, to look at some videos and, and try to find information. But I was just yeah. I was just like a book soaking everything. I was reading anything I could find. I was, you know, I had the Bible. I had... Um, videos you know youtube tons of that so yeah i think i did a good job for myself and i'm still here <laughs> had some mishaps but i haven't had anything serious happen i haven't like crashed really bad you know like do you, do you feel phone. like you're still learning I today any injuries. let's just say i haven't been injured flying i've bent my frame i've you know i've done some rollovers but i haven't been injured she asked if you think you're still learning do you Am still, still feel learning? like you're learning I'm always learning. Everyone's learning as a pilot, I think. I okay. think the day you stop learning is the day that you become complacent, maybe. I, I just, I mean, that's what I like about flying, too, is that you're always progressing. It's not something you're going to get bored with if you really like to fly, unless you just want to. And even if you're just flying straight and level, you're always going to see something different. You're always going to see a new perspective of something you might have not seen, even if you fly the same area. Um you know, because my area is, it's beautiful here, but I've got a limited area that I fly in. And so, so I'm, like, I'm tired of flying up and down the same old valley. And everyone comes here, man, it's so beautiful here. It's awesome. And I'm like, it's just like anyone's house. You know, anyone gets bored of their own area, I think, after a while. Even though it's, it's a beautiful area, people in Arizona probably get bored of the flying around that cool stuff sometimes. So, yeah, some people do get bored. But I mean, sometimes you have to write your own stories. Like if you're in the yeah. same spot, like, yeah, hey, I'm going to go take a high rip and I'm going to come down. Oh, play yeah. Well, oh, yeah. There's, and it's, and that's and the thing. That's what I'm saying. And, it's, you know, never you don't take the scenery always as the adventure. You take the air yeah. as the adventure that itself. Too, for sure. But I do I do have a question I bet everybody wants to know. All right. So if you're getting ready to do a makeout sesh with the old lady, is there like a lot of prep work to like gel and get the beard back and all that <laughs> stuff? Like, tell me about the logistics. Oh, we what? Shave it. My lady? Just, yeah. Or oh, yeah, just... yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> we both eat it at the same time, I guess. Nice. No. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, there's a, there's definitely a bit of hair in the way. I feel like I'm going to have to experience this personally to understand. Downhill really quick. <laughs> no okay. All right, moving on. Subject. Okay, <laughs> spinny wheel time. Yeah, we have a stay bad sticker and we have a phone lanyard tether. Uh, Aaron, Aaron's getting the stay bad sticker. Oh, stay bad. Sorry. Yes. Houston PPG or the phone lanyard tether little. Okay, do ask me a question. Well, hold on. They're doing the wheel right now. So maybe after a little bit. Okay, nice sticker. Okay. You know, she wants to play. She doesn't want to bite you. She wants to play. And then, Tori, if you could maybe get ready for my request. Oh! I'm going to Travis again. <laughs> Bill H., come on! Oh. oh, it's Wheezy. No, pass me on. What? Is that me? Oh, no. No, no, no. Spin again. Oh. No, oh, spin Hold again. On. I'm trying to rig this. I put Linda in there like three times. So I want to thank um, everybody for showing up tonight and hanging out with us as long as you are. Uh, got some new names in here. Dylan, Chris, Wendy the Explorer staying up with us. Matt G. Chris, uh, I said Kevin can fly. He's going to be a guest coming up. Hell yeah, Sorry, Kevin. Kevin. Bro. JP Tulo. JP. My homies in Pacific Northwest. <laughs> JP, tell me what you want. Houston PPG sticker or the little phone lanyard? If he's still in here. One more time. Yep. Let me know if he responds. John Wayne's in the house. Jen C. Caleb Coke. Bill H. Scuba. Hey, can you pull that? Oh, never mind. I got it. Tony Marzano was in here. Matt. Mad Sloper was in here. I think he left. That's fit. Justin Williams, Fort Windwalker, Kelby Cox. Something's not working. 
<laughs> ah. Sport Wind Walker. And Justin. I think he just logged off, so. Again? He's got to work early in the morning. No, no, no. Not again. No. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. So, JP and I'll check with them. Oh, Scuba, I just got yours out today also. So. I was wondering what that sound was in the background. All right. If you guys want to stick around for a little Tory concert, I requested. And then stick around for the outro when we're done. JP's all, always in need of a starter. <laughs> so I did a little um, snooping on Tori, and he seems pretty musically inclined. I tried having him make his own intro song. But I told him that he you know, have a polka instead, but. <laughs> Steve, get your little piano thing playing. Flare! What's up? Oh man, I am aroused. <laughs> there we go.
<laughs> Sweet. I suck, but it's fun. Oh, hey, whatever. You know, <laughs> this might be a little bit too open and too much information, but I, after that, I am not wearing panties right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Nice job, Tori. Very good. Put your underwear back on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <See> you? <laughs> you forgot the kid was here. <laughs> And I have a question for you, Steve. Go for it. Um, are you named after Minecraft? Am I a master of Minecraft? Oh, oh you're talking about you Steve from Minecraft because he has the pickaxe. So his name are is you Steve. Named are you after named him? after? No, that guy was named after me. <laughs> <laughs> like if you go into the programming code, his name is Hot Butter Steve in Minecraft. Yeah. You're Minecraft because. Your name is Steve and, and yeah. my robot and and um and my Minecraft character is Steve. You're gonna have to change it to Hot Butter I Steve. You were named. You gotta get that molten pickaxe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm just putting in the the invite. If you're interested, I guess I don't know if they even asked if Tori was willing to stick around for a little bit. If anybody wanted to join in in the after show. Um, just remember to use Google or Foxfire or Firefox um, when you log in. Otherwise, it won't work. So um, we'll stick around for a little bit afterwards. And you guys can say hi to Tori if you want. So, Nobody Tori, um, what do you have for social media that we can all find you at? Uh, I got a Facebook page. Nothing, nothing major. And you I have Tori. Tori Pope on YouTube. Yeah. Got okay. A YouTube channel. All right. Deweese, anything new? You? I'm sorry, no, Tori, what? Not yet. I'm not big on that stuff. I guess, I guess I'm not cool enough to do TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Deweese? Okay, um, you just do a you can pet this dog. <laughs> YouTube, Facebook. You can pet that. All right. And hot buttered Steve, any um, I'll go first. You can um, anybody that won tonight, please send me your um, addresses and Facebook Messenger if you can. And um, I'm usually on there. Otherwise, Instagram, Flying Flamingo, Fade, and um, that's pretty much it. I don't do TikTok too much. So. <laughs> I'd like to also say thank you um, in reference to my robot that's been chatting occasionally. Um, it actually is working and we are getting donations for the show and I'm trying to work on getting some more stuff so we can keep that spinny wheel moving and greased up so we can get you some fun things out occasionally and it helps um, get it out in the mail. <laughs> So we really appreciate um, John Wayne and Travis um, that have um, already donated. So 
Anything else? And Steve? If we don't see you on there, we'll see you in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys have a good night. And Tori, thank you if you want to stick around. We'll see if anybody wants to join in in the after show. Stick around, guys, if you want. Bye. Fly safe. Thank mm -hmm. you.